So here we're looking at the welfare effect of a subsidy, and this is from my microeconomics textbook, and I'm uh, Richard Freiberg. So this follows up on what we've uh, done in uh, previous videos in, in this chapter. We're using the same supply and demand functions that we did there. Uh, so we're assuming that demand is equal to 23 minus P, and supply is equal to minus one plus P over uh, two. Okay, sorry, that looks crappy. So let's uh, write that more properly. That's a two. Okay, so now we're gonna be looking at the welfare effects of a subsidy. So I think it's just the flip side of a, um, of a tax, of a unit tax. So here with the subsidy, uh, we again, differentiate between the price that uh, buyers pay and the price that suppliers get, okay? Here, the difference is that there's a subsidy for each unit uh, that, is, uh, that is purchased, the government is paying a subsidy of a certain amount of, of euros or dollars or whatever your currency. So for again, keeping track of the price that buyers are uh, paying and the price that sellers are getting, the, price for buyers, price for sellers. And ha here we note then that the price that sellers get is equal to the price that the buyers pay plus the subsidy. So let's uh, assume in this particular case that the subsidy is equal to three euros, okay? So if buyers pay one euro, then suppliers get four euros, one plus four, okay? So again, we have a system of equations that we can solve for uh, optimal prices uh, and um, and uh, the equilibrium quantities. Okay, so let's uh, draw that. Let's uh, illustrate in in a, in a graph as usual. Uh, so we have quantity, we have price. There's a um, demand curve and there's a supply curve. So that's equals D, S, and we know that from previous that if there's no tax or subsidy, no other distortions, uh, the equilibrium price is 16 and the equilibrium quantity is, is seven, okay? So, but now we want to solve, how does this market look when there's a subsidy? Uh, what are prices, what are quantities, and what are the welfare effects of those of that subsidy? So again, we note we can use the relation that we have between the um, price that suppliers are getting and the price that buyers are, are um, per, um, paying and inserting that into uh, the equilibrium uh, condition. Okay, so 23 minus PB equals, so it's just taking quantity demanded from here, then quantity supplied equals what? Minus one plus, and now we're substituting in, instead of using PS, we substitute in what we know about um, uh, PS. So that's equal to PB plus three divided by a half or multiplied by one half. Okay, so we um, wanna solve for PB here. So multiply up the two, 46 minus two, 2PB equals minus 2 plus PB plus 3, okay, which gives us that uh, collecting terms here, 3PB equals to 45, or that PB equals to 45 divided by 3, which is 15. Okay, so we know that <clears throat> the price that buyers are uh, is pay are paying is 15, so lower than uh, the equilibrium price. Uh, so let's uh, do that in, um, in blue, say. Oops, I wasn't uh, be nice if it's uh, a straight line, I guess. So that's uh, more like a straight line. Let's see here. So that is 15. The price that buyers are, are paying, okay? Um, and at what's the quantity uh, there? So at that price, how much is are people demanding? Well, we just plug that into, uh, plug the price of 15 into the demand function. So 23 minus 15 equals eight. 
So the quantity now is eight. What's the price that the suppliers are getting? Well, they're getting um, the price that buyers is, are paying, so 15 plus the subsidy of three. So suppliers are getting 15 plus three equals to 18. So above the equilibrium price. Oops, that's also not straight. That's straight enough. So 18 and the same quantity, eight here, there. Okay, so with the subsidy, price that uh, buyers are paying is lowered, price that suppliers um, are getting is higher, and as a result, uh, quantities expand. So let's look at uh, the welfare effects of, of this. And uh, let's move to uh, color red here. So uh, just as in the other examples, we're looking at, uh, at the consumer surplus, we're looking at producer surplus, and we're looking at um, the costs or, or benefits to, to the government or revenue to the government. So what's the change in consumer surplus as a result of the subsidy. So under perfect competition, the consumer surplus is this triangle uh, equal to this area between the demand curve and the price of 16 up to the quantity of seven. Now price is falling and quantities are expanding. But, um, the consumer surplus now is this graded triangle below the uh, demand curve up until the price of 15. So if we're looking this whole area here of, we can draw it like this, the area of B is an increase in consumer surplus. Okay, so prices are falling and consumption expands. Uh, consumers uh, benefit from this in terms of a higher consumer, uh, consumer surplus. Producers, on the other hand, um, they're also happy. Prices increase, quantities expand. Uh, as always, producer surplus given by difference between price and what suppliers would be willing to supply for. Uh, supply curve, let's call this A. Let's dash this in another area like this. Um, there's a cost of the subsidy. So we could say change in subsidy that goes from zero to something. So what's the cost of the subsidy here? Well, it's, there's a subsidy of three euros per unit times eight units. So um, so a cost of uh, the subsidy of um, um, 24, 24 euros. I'm gonna say, before we do that, we should write that the change in producer surplus was plus A. Here, the change in subsidy, uh, so 24 euros, or the entire uh, rectangle here. So the subsidy times the quantity, so A plus B plus C. So A plus B plus C. That's the cost to the government of the subsidy. And what's the change in welfare? If we're looking, if we're measuring welfare by the sum of consumer surplus, producer surplus, and uh, the revenue or cost to the government, uh, well, then it's um, minus C, okay? So uh, there are some benefits, A and B, but the costs, A, B, and C, are greater than the benefits. What's the C here? Well, that's a deadweight loss of the subsidy. So deadweight loss. Okay, so what do we have here? Well, we have that the value to consumers, what the consumers are willing to pay is less than the cost uh, to suppliers. Okay, so here 
quantities are being added, units are being added, where uh, consumers value it at less than what it costs to produce, okay? So just as with taxes, this is not saying that subsidies should never be used or that taxes should never be used. There's uh, a large scope for both uh, in economics and, and we're looking at those in later chapters. What are the motivations for, for these? Uh, it's more that the way we think about this as economists, we want to be able to quantify, want to say, you know, should everything be subsidized? What are the costs of the subsidies? Where should we focus our resources? Okay. And um, looking at the total welfare effects and deadweight loss is, is one way of doing that. <laughs>